Hello guys, I'm Bintang Sinja here and in this video, we're gonna be talking about characters. And I'm not really an expert in this field, but I think I can show you something. Okay, the first stage is about asset creation which include modeling, sculpting, and texturing. In terms of modeling, usually people will refer to polygonal modeling which you can push and pull some of the vertices or faces to get some kind of shape of 3D objects. A long time ago, this technique was quite common in the artist workflow, both for organic and hard surface modeling. But now, for characters which usually has some kind of organic shape, this technique is quite hard and boring to be used. On the other hand, sculpting is very handy and awesome. I believe this technique is used by many professionals nowadays. It is very intuitive and break the limitation of polygonal modeling technique. So for organic modeling, you can go for sculpting. Usually, we will have some base mass to work with, but you don't have to. You can also start with simple cube to sculpt but I prefer to start with a simple base mesh before I sculpt. So you can either make it yourself or grab some free base mesh from the internet. If we talk about sculpting in Blender, you can either choose two methods. First, using multi res modifier and second, using dynamic topology or I believe in Zebras, this is called Dynamesh. I use them both depends on what task that need to be done. There are some advantages and disadvantages of both methodology. Uh, if you use multi res modifier, typically your base topology will be fine, but I think we will have some limitation on the creative way, like if you want to have more detail on some parts but not on the other parts, you still need to increase all the subdivision to higher level for all messes unfortunately. On the other hand, dynamic topology gives us a lot more creative freedom while we were working. But in the end, you need to do retopology to make sure our model is efficient for UV on the texturing stage, animation, and also render in terms of render time. For me, it's kind of like a flip workflow. If you're using multi res, you could start with a good topology on the base mesh and adding more subdivision to have more details along the way. While using dynamic topology, you could start with sculpting and adding details on some specific parts and then do a retopology after that. So yeah, this is something we can choose, but sometimes I combine both of them. So like, even to make a best mess, I tend to sculpt the object and back it up somewhere so I can go back later if I start messing around with Dynatopo. On the texturing stage, at least you need some proper UV layout for your 3D models. This can be achieved by mark some edges to your model so we can make a 2D representation of our 3D model. Okay, now you also need some type of textures. You need to make a base color textures for sure. Also, an SSS textures if you make a characters, a specular or glossy, even roughness textures, bump or normal textures, and the displacement textures. The software to produce these textures is very on the market. You can choose whatever you want. I believe Substance Painter is the leading industry right now in terms of this textures creation. But here, I just try to use Blender and Photoshop. So, how do you paint and make these textures? One of many ways is search for some image textures to be projected and by using a B projection add-on, you can paint the photo onto the 3D objects. The other way is paint the textures from scratch by yourself, usually maybe like a stylistic characters. After you make a base color textures, you can then modify the textures in Photoshop or Gym to make another texture like a specular maps and bump maps or bump textures. Sometimes you also want to have a displacement map which you can extract from your high res 3D models to your retopology model by using a bake option in render setting of Blender. Okay, those are the first stage which is asset creation. The next stage is look development which include pre-lighting setup shading creation and also hair creation. Some of you might disagree with me because why not put hair creation before look development? But I prefer to do some lighting tests along with my hair creation. So that's why I put here in this stage. Usually I'll use basic three point light system. 
So we have like a key light, fill light, and rim light. For most of the materials, I use principal BSDF, which I think most likely a PBR shader for Blender. When I quite happy with the lighting, I can then start making hair or grooming stage, and also apply hair materials to them. In Blender, we have a particle system. You can choose type to be hair and use particle edit to start grooming. The third stage is short lighting and preparing render setup. What I mean by short lighting, sometimes with different camera angle, we need to adjust some rotation of the lighting slightly to propagate how the light works on characters. Not always in some cases, but yeah, sometimes you just need to adjust it a bit. Preparing the render setup. Using cycles, I just need at least one beauty pass with all passes include like ambient occlusion, one separate specular pass, and one object mask pass. For object mask, I decided not to use Blender Object Index or Material Index because it's causing problems on the edges of the alpha. So I decided to make a new scene in Blender to make this one and give them new materials using basic color so I can mask it in comp later. I think Blender act differently in terms of render layer with Maya. The way render layer works in Maya is more likely like how Blender scene works rather than this render layer in Blender. So that's why I use scene instead of render layers. For render setting, it's quite simple. I use high sample like around 1000 and check on denoising and save it as OpenEXR multi-layer. The fourth state is compete in Blender. Using all EXRs that I've rendered, I start to make a new Blender file. So this is like a dedicated comp file and then make some notes in order to have a control over the colors and adjustment. I start with reducing glossiness on beauty render pass, which is, I think it's too much in my opinion. Then combine it with ambient occlusion and specular maps. I also extract all the object mask so I can color adjust it separately. Adding a bokeh blur to the background and also give some layer adjustment to the whole image and also give some chromatic aberration using some translate node on the channel and also lens distortion. Vignette and then I render it again and save it as PNG so I can bring it into Photoshop. And also I make some file output node for all object mask and save it to PNG as well. The fifth stage is compete in Photoshop, GIMP or Krita or whatever software you want. I start with PNG from Blender and then make a mask selection for face, beard, hair, lips, and also background. And give some final touch on the image itself like brighten up some parts area. And also add film grain. And last but not least, I combine all images together into one image using Ctrl Shift Alt E in Photoshop and convert it as smart object and adding filter liquify and unsharp mask to adjust some of the shape of the characters. So now we have a final image and you can also put signature if you want. So I think that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video. If you like, you can subscribe for more videos from me and I'll see you guys on my next video.